<laughs> the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's Self Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> bad weather days ahead, that's sure. If I only had the time, I'd like to visit the kitchens of all you good ladies and make certain your linoleum floors are protected with Johnson self-polishing glow coat. Then you wouldn't have to worry about rain or snow being tracked in over those floors. You could keep them clean as a whistle and shining brightly with practically no attention. Occasionally, you give the linoleum a new application of glow coat. You know how easy that is because Johnson's glow coat needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. Still things or wet footprints are wiped up in a jiffy. The film of glow coat really protects the linoleum, keeps it from wearing out. I've told you before, and I'd like to remind you now, that the regular use of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat will make your linoleum surfaces last six to ten times longer. At the same time, keeping them bright and new-looking and so beautiful you're proud to have your friends come back to your kitchen. You couldn't ask a floor polish to do more than that now, could you? What happiness at 79 Wistful Vista this morning. The proud husband is going around with his chest stuck out. The lady is wearing a smile of contentment. Yes, the doctor has just left, and here, gazing with wonder and joy at the beautiful new five-and-a-half-pound arrival, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. Come on. Oh, please, McGee, not for a minute. I'm, well, I'm hardly used to it yet myself. <laughs> Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, sure is. <laughs> well, that's the way it always is, I guess. Thousands of people have them, and everybody thinks theirs is the best. Yeah. <laughs> nice for Doc Gamble to bring it. Now, let's be good to this one. What do you mean, be good to this one? Heavenly days, we may not get another telephone directory for the duration. <laughs> Come on. Let me hold it a minute, Molly. Thanks. Boy, it sure is heavy, isn't it? And the cover is so clean. Yeah. <laughs> I almost hated to turn the old one in. You know, it had numbers and recipes and memoranda and doodling all over the covers. <laughs> I wish they'd get a new design for the cover of these things, though. This guy carrying the snake makes me nervous. <laughs> hey, I think I'll call somebody up. Who? Oh, I don't know, anybody. When the phone company goes to all the trouble to give us a nice book like this, the least we can do is use it. Hand me the phone. Here, and talk as loud as you like now. The phone bill is paid. Thanks. <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me the residence of Kipling W. Pickhandle at Whistle Vista 7294 Pete Fake. Is that you, Mert? Oh. <laughs> oh, dear, in spades. <laughs> uh, how's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What say, Mert? She did, did she? <laughs> Well, that ought to be a red litter day in her life. You mean red letter day, dearie? I mean litter. Their Irish setter just had puppies. <laughs> what say, Mert? Okay, nothing important anyway. No answer. Say, uh, who's Kipling W. Pickhandle? Oh, I don't know. I just pickhandled him just out of the book at random. Thought it'd be kind of clubby to talk to him. <laughs> Both of us in the same book and all, you Yes, know. it is cozy, isn't it? Yeah. Say, maybe we all ought to get together once a month and have a nice... <laughs> yeah. Come in. Hi, mister. Hi. McGee. Hi, sis. Hello, little girl. What's the matter with you, sis? As the guy says to the movie producer when they shot Frankenstein, you look like you'd lost your best fiend. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you find that amusing? No. Okay, sour puss. Okay. Is there something wrong, little girl? Yes, open up, sis. Remember, things are rarely as bad as they seem, which is a good thing because they're usually worse than you thought. <laughs> well, come on, give us the dirt, squirt. Did you... Did you... 
Yes, have you seen anything of a little doggy, mister? Who no, but the you? telephone operator just told us she had, I mean, Major, her Irish setter just had a few current events. No, no, oh. McGee, for goodness sakes, can't you see the child is upset? No, we haven't seen your little dog, little girl. What kind of a pooch was it, sis? Oh, he's awful cute. Mm -hmm. He's the most wonderful dog in the world, I bet you. He's got blue eyes. Blue eyes? I never heard of a dog with blue eyes. And that's okay, mister. He never heard of you either. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, okay. Complete the description, sis. Well, he's awful cute. You said that. Okay. He's got blue eyes and long ears and brown and white fur about this long. Fur 18 inches long? No, the dog. Oh, I see. And he's got a little bitty stub of a tail that sticks straight up in the air like a hitchhiker. Holds his thumb up, only he's facing the other way. <laughs> Well, I see. Uh, what do you call the dog, little girl? Yeah, Sport, Fido, Prince, or just Hey You? I call him Eddie. Oh, for Edward? No, for Clarence. <laughs> well, then why don't you call him Clarence? I like Eddie better. <laughs> oh, Eddie. Hey, 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 hey. Now, take it easy, sis. Take it easy. Well, gee, if he was your dog, I bet you you'd be worried about you. I bet you you'd be hollering your head off. Now, 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 don't do that. Hey, Molly, get the kid a handful of cookies, will you? All right. Uh, I know exactly how you feel, sis. Well, I... Hmm? Yes, sir, I lost a wonderful dog once. A big white dog. What kind? Expectorate. You mean spit. Well. <laughs> yes, if you want to be crude. Well, sir, sis, this was the smartest dog in all Peoria. Oh. A trick dog. A friend of mine and I named uh, Fred Nittany of Tribe Rock, Illinois, used this dog in our vaudeville act. Something went wrong there. He could roller skate, tap dance, do card tricks, and lead the orchestra. Mm, gee, he must have been wonderful. He hmm. was. How'd you lose him, mister? Matter of fact, sis, we didn't lose him. He lost us. When the bookers saw him leading the orchestra, they fired us and signed up the dog. <laughs> Last time I knew of Curly, his name was Curly, he was on the road with an all-dog dance band. <laughs> They say it's quite a sight to see those coochies throw down their saxophones and chase the hepcats around the hall, calling them. Well, now, here's the cookies, little girl, and a glass of chocolate milk. Yeah, you feel better now, sis? Thank you, Miss McGee, and I... No. Hmm? I don't feel better. I want my doggy here, 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 here. Now, don't cry, sis. We'll find your dog. We'll scour the town for him. We'll drag out the throw net. It's throw out the drag net. Huh? Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, come on, Molly. Get your hat. You coming with us, sis? No. Uh. See, I've been all over town already, mister. Uh -huh. I'll just stay here and eat cookies. Okay. Okay, but you take it easy. Well, I'm ready, dearie. Goodbye, little girl. Go on, sis. Here, Eddie. Here, Eddie. Here, Eddie. Here, Eddie. Here, Eddie. Nice talking. Here, Eddie. <laughs> Billy Mills and the orchestra playing She Didn't Say Yes.
Yeah? Good day, sir. Now, look, bud. We're looking for a little dog, brown and white, about this long, with long ears, a stubby tail, and blue eyes. Yeah, and we thought we saw one sitting on the windowsill in here, and uh, we wondered if... What's his name? Eddie. Can't be the same one. Why not? This is a cat. Did you see anything of a small dog about this long, brown and white, with a stubby tail and blue eyes? Answers to the name of Eddie. No, I did not. Have you tried the Lost and Found? No, no, we haven't, officer. Ah, it is a wonderful institution, the Lost and Found. My wife gets a lot of jewelry that way, but describing the lost article and paying a small reward. Of course, you can't always hit the right description, but it works out often enough. I'll never forget the time she came home with a diamond terrata. Uh, have, hey, have you seen the dog? No. Come on, McGee. <laughs> How do you do? Hi, ma'am. Excuse us, but there seems to be a lot of dogs in this neighborhood, and we wondered if you'd seen anything of a little one about this long, brown and white, with a stubby tail and blue eyes. No, I haven't. If you see one like that, will you call us, sis? No, I won't. For goodness sakes, why not? Anytime I start seeing little dogs with blue eyes, I'll go on the wagon. <laughs> turned out to be quite a search, McGee. Where should we go now? Gee, I don't know. Maybe we better start... Oh, look, McGee. Huh? Look. Here's Meyerhoff's butcher shop. Lots of dogs hang around butcher shops, you know. Yeah, yeah. So do lots of people these days. <laughs> I sit up and beg every time I go in there myself. <laughs> but we might as well give it a try. Well, come on. Hey, Meyerhoff. You will have to wait your turn, mister. Get around to the end of the... Oh, it's you, McGee. Now, listen. Pretend like we want to buy something, McGee. Have you any nice weenies today, Mr. Meyerhoff? Nice weenies, she inquires. Folks, we got some weenies with a skin you love to touch with mustard. <laughs> we call them our Roosevelt Delano Frank. <laughs> because you don't have to park the hide. <laughs> How many do you want? Uh, well, we'll be in later for them, Meyerhoff. But we wanted to ask you, did you see anything of a little brown and white dog? He disappeared, and we... Insinuations? You make it at me, McGee? Huh? First time we got Lini, second what? the dog disappeared. Yeah. Maybe you'll tell me Sea Biscuit is missing, and have I got any porter house? No, no. Come in, my big cleaver. Oh, oh come on, McGee. <laughs> well, we don't seem to handle that very diplomatically, dearie. Look for a minute like you were going to wind up with a cleaver in your clavicle. <laughs> Well, if I was a butcher, I guess I'd be kind of edgy these days, too. They got mugs yapping at them every day for sirloins that never ate meat more than twice a month in their lives. <laughs> you know, that's why the new meat coupons are brown, dearie. Mm -hmm. The dealers got tired of seeing red all the time. <laughs> well, this isn't kidding to find the kid's dog. I wonder if we better... Hello there, Molly. Hiya, pal. Well, hello, Mr. Wilcox. Ask him, McGee. He gets around a lot, you know. Yeah, look, Junior, we're on the lookout for a little dog. Well, that's nice of you. Who's he afraid of, the dog catcher? No. We mean we're looking for a little dog, Mr. Wilcox. Oh. Yeah, this bone cruncher belongs to the little girl across the street, Junior. We're trying to find it for her. Well, gee, I'm sorry, folks. I hope you find it. I think everybody ought to have a dog. I think you ought to have one, too. Oh, you love dogs, don't you, Mr. Wilcox? You bet. Dog is man's best friend. Particularly a man who sells Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're sure you won't mind if we give the sponsor a brief moment for identification. <laughs> <laughs> He's been a good kid. <laughs> a buzzer will sound before we resume the performance. Smoking in the outer lobby only. Well, Junior? Well, what I mean is that people who have dogs running in and out of the house appreciate a glow-coated linoleum floor because Johnson's self-polishing glow coat makes it so easy to wipe up muddy paw prints tracked in by Trixie and Sports and Napoleon. It eliminates old-fashioned floor scrubbing, which dries out and ages linoleum before it's time. Glow coat protects and preserves and make having a dog much less trouble and lots more fun. Okay, folks, resume your seats, please. <laughs> so you haven't seen anything of Eddie, eh, Junior? Eddie, you know, is the name of the little girl's dog, Mr. Wilcox. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't. And I'm sorry she lost her puppy. Lots of people who like dogs can't keep them around now, you know. They're sending them to friends in the country because it's so hard to get meat. Is that so? Isn't that terrible? Yeah. In fact, you know what I heard? What'd you hear, bud? Look. I heard that dogs are getting so scarce now that the fleas are forming dog pools. Oh. See you later, folks. Fleas <laughs> <laughs> are forming dog pools. If that ain't the corn... 
Hey, you know what I got a good mind to do, Molly? What, dear? If we don't find that puppy pretty quick, I'm going to get a bunch of guys together like Uncle Dennis and Doc Gamble and Wilcox and Billy Mills and form a possum. Oh, no. <laughs> you don't mean a possum, you mean a posse. I do not. Posse means something is out of date. No, and that's passe. Go on. Passe is that green stuff that falls in your lap when you try to cut up a lamb chop. <laughs> Oh, dearie, you're thinking of parsley. I never know such a thing. Parsley is a pattern in a shawl. My grandmother had one. That was Paisley. No, sir. Paisley was my cousin. My grandmother's name was Underwood. I didn't mean your grandmother. I meant the shawl. They're called Paisley shawl. Why should my grandmother wear a shawl named after my cousin? And why didn't I mean possum? Because a possum is a little animal that pretends to be asleep. Sure it is. And when a bunch of us guys form a possum, we'll wake that pooch up wherever he is. I tell you, Molly, we got... Here comes Alice Darling. Hmm. Sure looks bright for a kid that gets as little sleep as she does. Maybe she's walking in her sleep. Maybe she's a snomnibulist, a snomnibulist. What do they call people who walk in their sleep? Sleepwalkers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. Oh, hi, Alice. Hello, Mr. McGee. Hello, honey. Well, why aren't you home in bed, child? Didn't you just get through work? Yes, I did, but I promised myself I'd do my Christmas shopping early this year, so I've been up in the Bon Ton department store telling Santa Claus all the things I want. Aren't you a little old for that kind of stuff, sis? Oh, I guess a girl is never too old to tell her father things like that, Mr. McGee. Hmm? <laughs> Though he didn't think I recognized him with that beard on. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing your shopping? No, we're hunting for a dog, Alice. Belongs to the little girl across the street from us. Brown and white, blue eyes, long ears, and a stubby little tail that sticks up like a hitchhiker's thumb. Oh, she sounds awfully cute. What does her dog look like? <laughs> Alice, that is the dog. Yes, Don't and you. if you see it, grab it and bring it home, will you? Indeed, I will, Mr. McGee. Now, listen, you better get home and get some sleep. Oh, I will, Mrs. McGee. And Look, I... Alice, uh, speaking about Christmas, now, don't you go spending a lot of money on Mrs. McGee and I. McGee! <laughs> oh, Mr. McGee, you're the most... Well, old. gee whiz, what if we are just like her own family? <laughs> what if we do look after her like she was our own kid? What if she does come to us for help and advice and stuff? My gosh, that's no reason why you, you should, she should blow 10 or 15 bucks McGee, on us. McGee, no. <laughs> here, here, stop it. Pay no attention to him, Alice. All right, I won't. I should say not. <laughs> 10 or 15 bucks is way too much, anyway. <laughs> gee whiz, a good box of cigars is only five or six. Even if you get my favorite kind, El Fogo del Cuba. They only it. You better describe the box to her, too, dearie, so she'll know what kind you don't want her to squander her money on. That's a good idea. It's a brown box with a picture of a fat Spanish lady on it holding a tobacco leaf. McGee. Oh, remember now, Alice, don't you do it. Well, I'll try and remember, Mr. McGee. And I hope you find the little girl with the long ears. No, no, Alice, it was a little dog. Oh. Are you going home now? No, no, I've got to go back to the bon Ton and see if my girlfriend is out of the revolving door yet. Oh, my gosh, did she get stuck? Oh, no. She just met an old boyfriend she used to go around with, and he's really giving her a whirl this time. <laughs> Goodbye, now. <laughs> the King's Men singing Lena from Palestina. Oh, murder, not good 
but loud. She was fat and keen, a cleaner, squeezing on her concertina. With her concertina, Lena is the queen of Palestine. Well, I'm afraid it's no use, McGee. Uh, I've worn out my voice and a good pair of shoes and still no puppy. Mm -hmm. Now I know what they mean by dog tired. <laughs> Gee, I hate to give up, Molly. It'll break the kid's heart if we don't find the pup. You go on home and I'll keep on looking. Oh, I'll do no such a thing, McGee. I can take it as long as you can. Say, look, why don't we ask Mr. Wellington? Who? Mr. Wellington, the manager of the Bijou. You know, all the children go to his theater and... Where there are children, there are puppies. Oh, it's a good idea. It's just a couple of doors down here. Oh, there's old Sig now changing the sign on the marquee. Hi, Sig. Hello, Mr. Wellington. Well, good day, Mrs. McGee. How charming you look this morning. Thank you. This is indubitably one of the finest. I say, move along, my good man. Can't you see I'm speaking to this lady? What do you mean, my good man? I'm her husband. You know that, Wellington. Oh, bless my soul. <laughs> Dipper McGee. So sorry, old man. Misplaced my spectacles this morning, and I suffer acutely, you know, from a stigma. Tism. Well, that's too bad, Mr. Wellington. I see you're changing the picture today. What's the new one? We present for the next seven days, and I quote from the advance publicity, a thriller diller, killer chiller, the horrific, terrific, keep a stiff upper lipic, dynamite, melodrastic, super epical master drama of all time. I understand it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, but what's the name of it? We are billing it as the Phantom of Olsen and Johnson. <laughs> Don't you mean the Phantom of the Opera? Frankly, yes. But you see, my patrons, Mrs. McGee, are inclined to be slightly frightened by the implications of the word opera. We, we cater to a group of people who are made ill by ill trovatore <laughs> and who think cavalleria is an old rusty canna. <laughs> they, they are allergic to the classics. They are, in a word, X without class. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, sick old man, we're looking for a dog. Then you should have seen the picture we played last week. Oh, yes. Here we oh. go again with Edgar Bergen and three dummies. There, my friend, was a cinematic canine that shouldn't happen to anyone. <laughs> we were in that, Mr. Wellington. Oh, and you, my dear lady, were the redeeming feature, if that feature could have been redeemed. <laughs> well, how'd you like me in it, Sig? What kind of a dog were you looking for, old fellow? <laughs> well, a small dog about this big with a stiff little tail and long ears and blue eyes. And if you should see it, give me a buzz, will you, Sig? Mm -hmm. I shall telegraph you from Mongolia, my friend, uh -huh. because should I ever encounter such a monstrosity, I shall go hither in a zither. <laughs> and now, if you will excuse me, I must make arrangements for today's matin. Eh? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, come on, McGee. <laughs> come on, dearie. Uh, good day, Mr. Wellington. A toodaloo and a toodaloo to oo too, <laughs> McGee. <laughs> Smart guy. He ought to petition the court for permission to change his name. Change his name to what? John Cass, and let the nicknames fall where they may. <laughs> hey, I'm about all in, you know what? Where else can we look for that little kennel cut up? Well, let's see. We haven't tried the dog farm. Oh, that's right. Look, let's pop into Kramer's drugstore and phone him. What do you say? I'll wait right here, dear. If I went in, I'd just order a soda, and I'm too tired to lift the straw. I'll wait here. Okay. I'll be right back. Here I go in the Kramer's drugstore. Well, hello there, Mrs. McGee. Waiting for somebody? Why, hello, Dr. Gamble. Yes, McGee just went in to telephone the dog pound. Well, I hope they can take him. <laughs> Do you good, Mrs. McGee, to get him away for a few days? <laughs> oh, now, Doctor. Now, we're looking for a dog. The little girl across the street is all broken up because she lost her dog. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. I had a dog once as a child, but my mother gave it away. Oh, why? Well, they told me it was a watchdog, and it bit me when I tried to wind it up. <laughs> well, that was pretty silly. You know, my uncle had a St. Bernard once and wore all the fur off his neck looking for brandy. <laughs> well, I guess all dogs are... Oh, hello there, McGee. Hi, Doc. 
I called the dog pound, Molly, and they got no dog by that description. Oh, dear. By what description, McGee? Just a little dog, Doc, about this big with droopy ears and a stubby little tail. Yeah, and it's brown and white with blue eyes. With blue eyes? Don't tell me it had dimples and barked in baby talk. All we know now is what the kid told us, Doc. She ought to know her own dog. See, now we got to go home and admit we flopped the assignment. I feel awful about well, this. Well, so do I, dear. We practically promised her we'd find it, and anybody who breaks a promise to a child... Oh, is... come, come, come. The mud is probably home by now, happily chewing up the parlor curtain. Say, it might be at that, Molly. Come on, let's go home and see. That's the best suggestion I've heard today. Thanks for the ray of hope, Doctor. Not yeah. at all, my dear, not at all. That's the way I am. hippity hopping through life, gathering little hunks of gladness. Pollyanna Gamble, the sunshine boy. <laughs> dancing on the dewdrops with... Excuse me. Where are you going, Doc? The drugstore and get a bromo. I nauseate myself. <laughs> well, let's get home. Okay. I sure hope that pup has come back. Otherwise, uh... Hey, Molly, here comes the streetcar. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Hey, sis, we're home again. Did your dog come back? Hey, sis, where are you? Did your dog... Shh, shh, quiet, McGee. She's asleep on the Davenport. Oh, look. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah. Milk and cookie crumbs all over her little face. Boy, I dread to wake her up with the bad news. Well, so do I, but it's got to be done. Little girl, wake up, dear. It's Mr. and Mrs. McGee. Come on, sis. Come on. That's the girl. Wake up. Mm. Huh. Oh, hi, mister. Hi, Miss McGee. <laughs> Mm, see, I had a wonderful dream. Did you, sis? Mm-hmm. I had a dream that you found my doggy with the blue eyes and the little tail that sticks up and everything. Mm -hmm. Did you, mister? Mm, did you? Mm, did you find Eddie? Uh, well, look, sis, we... Well, we looked all over town and... You... You couldn't find my little doggy? No. Then we're sorry. Yes, sis, we went clear down to oh. the... Do oh, that's okay, mister. Huh? You only been looking one day. I've been looking for years, I bet you. you... <laughs> what do you mean, you've been looking for years? When did you see this dog last? Oh, I never saw him, mister. But what? Gee, I've always wanted a little dog with long ears and a little stubby tail and blue eyes. Oh, my God. <laughs> When your heating system is turned on, there's apt to be a little more dirt around the house. It shows not only on your curtains and walls, but on your windowsills and floors and on your furniture. So in wintertime, there's an added reason for keeping your floors, furniture, and woodwork protected with genuine Johnson's wax. Those waxed surfaces are not only more beautiful, they're much easier to keep clean. And that counts for a great deal in most of your homes today. Now, there's no need for me to remind you that a waxed home is a clean home, and a clean home is a more sanitary, healthful place for your family. So you see, although you really start using Johnson's Wax to protect wood, metal, and leather surfaces, you'll probably go on using it for many other reasons. Labor saving, greater home beauty, and sanitation. Now it's the same whether you use Johnson's Wax in the paste or liquid form, or the new cream wax developed especially for furniture and woodwork. The name Johnson is your assurance of absolute reliability. a wild pooch chase, wasn't it, McGee? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it was. I got flat feet clear up to my hips. Yeah. And you know, the only person we met who was even sympathetic was Dr. Gamble. Well, he's sensitive about dogs, you know. Even his draft classification is K-9. What? <laughs> K-9? Mm -hmm. What on earth is that? Didn't you ever notice how deep his bones are buried? Oh, dear. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> The character of Mr. Wellington heard on this program was played by Ransom Sherman. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Chicago WMAQ.